In this episode, we're celebrating the career and music of the incredible Christine McVie. Stay with us. Welcome, friends, to the 33 and 24 podcast. Uh, Eric, I was talking to somebody yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. and they, you know, I was, oh, what's the name of your podcast, 3324? Is that women's measurements? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So I'm like, no, no. but it, I can understand. I can understand wow, that's where you're getting that from. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So that, know, that could be. I don't even be know what if, to say about that. But if somebody wants to do a fashion podcast about women's <laughs> measurements, uh, 3324 is taken for some other yeah. reason. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm kind of like. I, I thought it was funny. Kind of yeah, I, well, I kind of feel kind of dirty now because it's like, is that what they think of us? We're, I don't know. Doing like a, you're talking about women on our podcast? Is that well, if you have to, well, we do talk about some women. We talk about well, musical yes. women and we talk right. about very talented and artistic mm -hmm. women. Uh, we just don't talk about their measurements. So uh, <laughs> if you came here for that, if you're, if you're listening to this, uh, thinking when are they going to get to talking about hips, hip size and dress sizes? We're not going to get there. It's we're, not going to happen. Gonna there. Nope. No. No. We're, we're just, you know, it's it's music and movies. Is what it is. Yep. So, uh, and you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. If you haven't already, go check us out over there. It's a great time. Oh, my goodness. We have such a, a great community of people there. Uh, so much fun. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a like as well. And if you would put a comment too, because we respond to the comments. Sure. So, yeah. By Lots all means. Lots of fun there. Yeah. yeah. We just, I just love seeing our faces plastered on my big TV. Yeah. You know, like I put it on YouTube. We watch it. <laughs> yeah. It was a little, it's a little daunting at first, but yeah, you, you get, get, you over get it. used to it. It's like, okay. Yes, you do. Yep. It's like, oh, there, there's another thumbnail for me to click on and check out. So, yes. Uh, but we appreciate you joining us as uh, we get close to closing out our second uh, second year of podcasting. So we wouldn't, uh, we'd be doing this anyway if no one was listening, but it's even more uh, fun that people do listen. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you for joining us on, on our musical uh, journey. Tonight's going to be uh, a little melancholy, but but very celebratory, uh, especially in the, in the 3324 podcast land, right, Eric? I mean, Fleetwood Mac is, yeah. you know, we've done two, we've done two episodes on Fleetwood Mac, one on Lindsey Buckingham. Mm -hmm. uh, they come up often in our conversations because Fleetwood Mac is, is you know, one of the impetuses uh, for, for doing this podcast. Is that a Yeah, absolutely. Assessment? It's uh, one of our, as long as I've known you, no. one, of, one, of, one of two favorite bands. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. I, no, I think you knew me before I got into them, though. I, I kind of got into it like a little really? bit after. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think it was still like when I first met you. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I'm not sure. Well, my my Might have my been knowledge of, to it, but but I don't know. Well, don't know back at the it. time was all was all rumors. Yeah, for yeah. me. I mean, who who who? You know, let's say, let's face it. Everybody was a rumors fan. Yeah. Uh, when we first met, of course. So that's what that was Fleetwood Mac for me. Yeah. But then, as we probably mentioned many times, you you know you really got into Lindsey Buckingham, and then the whole that whole thing started, and we were. So, yeah, but as, you know, as a band, I think they were just uh, exceptional. They just yeah, made such as, great as we music our, together. As we took our musical journey and started, yeah, yeah, you know, feeling our way through what we liked and what what genres of music piqued our interest. Uh, you know, I mean, Fleetwood Mac is going to be right down the line of rock and roll. You're not going to get they're they're not very divisive as far as you know as far as music goes. Meaning they're not yeah. prog. They didn't. They're not genre breaking or, or they didn't do anything there. They're they're straight no. ahead rock and roll. But 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 within that, within that genre, they they've done a lot. And um, what what I what struck me this little talk about you know we're going to be talking about Christine McVie, um, you know some outside stuff, but but mainly with her with her time in Fleetwood Mac. What struck me she she passed away on November thirtieth from a, a short illness. We don't we don't know what it is, and it's not that important. We we know the fact is we lost her. Um, yeah, Seventy nine which... years old. Uh, a stellar career. What I didn't realize, or really what hit me about her passing was I didn't realize so many people on social media were as affected. Yeah. I, I did. I, I, yeah. I was surprised and I, I guess I shouldn't have been, but I was surprised by the outpouring of, I thought Christine McVie was going to be kind of a, you know, yeah, she's very important, but I didn't realize how many people really felt how important she was in, in their lives. 
That's true. That's very true. Because you usually think, well, Stevie Nicks is the, you know, if Stevie yeah. if ever goes, you know, if, if, it had, if it had been Stevie Nicks, I mean, you you would have expected huge, yeah. huge, re, you know, response. But yeah, Christine, surprised, that surprised me too. You yeah. know, I'm glad you brought that up because, and it's, and rightly so. Yeah. And that just, it, it also just confirms our, our opinion of her and, and the band in, in, at large. But it just, I'm glad. It's, I'm very glad that there, that she had that fan base. Yeah. That people did notice her. Yeah. You know? So it's it's very, very, very touching. Very nice. Yeah. She, she's very yep. easy to, it's very easy to get lost in the sauce of the Knicks and Buckingham, the fight, you know. Yeah. There's always still articles about that, about the fighting and the, you know, the whatever, the back and forth lobbing of insults. And, and Christy McVie, you know, was in the same boat, you know, her and John McVie went through the same things. But it, it is not, it is, was not something that keeps getting dredged up. It, it gets no. mentioned as a, as a side, a side item to the larger Buckingham Knicks, you know, yeah. a, a problem that per, let's say. So she's I, always been kind of in, 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 you know, kind of behind that, you know, I would say I would, I would, I would probably say that she was probably the adult in the room. Yeah. The whole time she was the mother hen. Uh, maybe it's a British thing. I don't know. Maybe they just, they take things in stride. They seem to have a better life hits hard and they, they just, they plow through it. Right. And you know, stay calm and you know, the whole thing, but, uh, stay calm. Yeah, and but she always took her back on. Yeah. She <laughs> was always to me, the, the, the sort of glue that, that kind of held that band together. And, uh, certainly the, uh, like Mick and, and John, well, John, her ex-husband, but Mick Fleet would also probably like her, like a brother. She had been in the band with, you know, for a, a very long time, long before Stevie and Lindsay joined. Um, and I, and I was, you know, Lindsay and Stevie were, they were like children, right? They're like two kids that are just, you know, they say how to knock some heads together sometimes and just be, you know, yeah, like they just, were a little bit younger than her. So, uh, you know, right. So there, there's right. that too. Yeah. All right. Let, let's start, let's start there then. Uh, we do have just it's just some stats. Christine McVie was actually born uh, Christine Perfect. Yeah, her last name is Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's her maiden name. Yeah. Uh, she she began playing with Fleetwood Mac in 1968 as a, like a, almost like a session musician. So not as a member of Fleetwood Mac, but she was certainly in the mix. Uh, and she she married John McVie in 1968. So she and she was in a group at the time, part of that 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 English blues scene. Uh, called Chicken Shack. Mm -hmm. um, she left Chicken Shack in 1969 because of her marriage to John McVie. It was like, okay, we can't be in two bands. So she retired, really, uh, to be with John McVie. And she would just kind of play on Fleetwood Mac albums again as kind of a guest, but not as a member. Um, but then yeah. she would join Fleetwood Mac in 1970. We talked about this in our either rumors, or I think it was in rumors, was the really the Round Robin or the mm -hmm. Tusk episode. The Round Robin of, of members from 68 to 75 uh, was palpable. But, but when McVie, when Christine McVie joined in 1970, she would, even though the band was still very directionless because of the other members that were coming and going, she was at least uh, a, a solidified part along with yeah. John, John McVie and Mick Fleetwood, the three of them, at least there was that, there was that base. And yeah. then you'd have, you know, Jeremy Spencer leave and Danny Kerwin leave and then Bob Welch come in and Dave mm -hmm. Weston come in and all these, all these other people were cycling. So there was still that, like we talked about. Yeah. That, that they lack, were, lack of direction. Right. They, 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 they were the foundation, uh, the rhythm of the band, the, uh, and uh, again, I mean, Christine is, is a, is a consummate professional. You know, she's a professional musician. Yeah. And I guess a lot of that sort of session playing really, I think it really lends something to the band, you know, because she's not the prima donna that that Lindsay is or Stevie is for, for, for sure. I mean, she, when she sings her song, she's still behind, you know, very much behind the keyboard. She's, well, she's not like right, right in front. Yeah, Sometimes they'll put like a little keyboard, you know, maybe out front for her to play. But, you know, typically she's in the back, but she's, yeah. Not flashy. She's not she showy. Is, well, that's you need yeah. that though. You need that structure, yeah. you know, in a great band. So, yeah. and she's got a really um, husky, bluesy voice. Yes. Yeah. Um, but but emotive and soulful at the same time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which which um, which kind of you know when you listen to the the, the pre Buckingham and Nick stuff, you can kind of hear. Um, I listened to the the album before 
the white Fleetwood Mac album before the first album with Buckingham and it's called Heroes was hard to find. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it is mixed so horribly that that their their, their production <laughs> the, like their production methods didn't do them any favors as well. No. Um the 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 music, the backing tracks were as loud as loud as or louder than her vocals. Um so she was get get kind of getting lost in the sauce, you know. Um and again, w- when you've got, you know, you've got Bob Welch in the band who joined but it's not his band, but he's the lead singer of the band. You know, mm-hmm. no, no one was really taking the lead. Yeah. You know, e- even Christine McVie was kind of, you know, oh, this is just a band and, and kind of people are cycling through. Um, but then w- once, you know, Nixon Buckingham joined, Lindsey Buckingham started to assert some type of leadership, which, which did right. kind of start some cohesiveness. And I think that when those two joined, I think Christine McVie, like that upgrade, I think upped her game. Because there is a difference between I, I, between that the the pre the pre Buckingham Nick stuff, you know, and then the post Buckingham. Like her, her songwriting, you know, just kind of it, it evolved. I don't know if it was because of okay, there's someone that's got some direction here. We kind of feel like we like it. We we have a plan at least. Yeah, I I would agree to that. If anybody had the right to become the leader, it, it could have been her. Absolutely. But that's just it. Just you know, that wasn't the thing. That wasn't important to her. It was important for to just all to serve the music. And, you know, so, like you say, like you pointed out, like I, I <laughs> you, you talk about heroes are hard to find that the title track alone is so, ah, oh, it's so brassy. And so yeah. like, you know, it's, it's it, too it, much. It, it screeches your ears. It, you know, it really, yeah, but you're right. Absolutely right. The, 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 the vocals are muffled. They're very in the background and she would also stay on after. Right, along after both Lindsay and Stevie left the band too. Let's not forget that. Yeah. So she was she's a long time, you know. So the ba- yeah, to, you know, through you know, through and through. I mean, she she had seen yeah. it all. So this was you That's know, right. I, I mean, she did get to a point where she did leave, but mm-hmm. um I, I think once you get once you get to what we, we would call the classic Fleetwood Mac lineup of of the five of them, mm-hmm. you know, Fleetwood, John McVee, Christine McVee, but Nixon Buckingham, um yeah, there, there's something to be said. You know, they were heading in a direction with Bob Welch, but I, ju- I just don't think it was there. You know, Christine McVie stuff was solid, but it was kind of, it, it was still, it, it kind of didn't really fit, you know, because Bob Welch's stuff was kind of very similar. Everything was kind of breezy and just really mellow. Very light. No, no counterpoints, yeah, you know, no right. counterpoints. So I, I think when they, when, when Fleetwood Mac did the upgrade in 75, mm-hmm. you know, and brought in these two people, um, you know, and like we said in, in our rumors album, that their first the white album took a year before it reached number one, just because they were touring and banging it out and getting to know each other. Um, but it was on the it was on the the back of like Christine McVie. You know, it was like "Say You Love Me." Mm-hmm. You know, was was like what was like the big hit. You know, Stevie Nicks for for all that Stevie Nicks is, she only had two songs on the first album, so she you know, it was still kind of on the back of of like Christine McVie. Um, you know, they were kind of coming into her territory, basically, you know, mm-hmm. uh, cause she had over, you know, over my head, say you love me, you know, those are two really two big hits. And then the only other, other really big hit was, was Rhiannon, not, to, not counting landslide, which was a concert hit, but yeah. Rhiannon was the only other kind of chart hit, but the, the two were, were Christine McVie, you know, That's so right. she was, she was solidifying, you know, the band, but, but, but also I think was influenced by the upgrade and the musicianship of, of what those two brought and, and no the doubt. dynamic and, they brought. And, you know, we, we discussed rumors, but I, you know, I'll have to say, I mean, the white album is, you know, you can't, you cannot, uh, count that one out. You, you really, oh. that is a very under, underappreciated album, in my opinion. I mean, despite the hits on it, there's some strong, strong stuff on there. You know, World Turning. Yeah. You got that collaboration already right out the gate. You got that collaboration with her and Lindsay trading vocals. Yeah. And, and, you know. Which would continue. They, you know, and and ironically enough, right? Ironically enough, like Nix and Buckingham are the pair that come. They end up really not working together too much, meaning like collaborating on stuff. It would be it would be Lindsey Buckingham and Christine McVie that would would find that connection, yeah, and that and that simpatico where where Christine McVie really trusted Lindsey Buckingham with her stuff, uh, and 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 understood that that he can kind of sharpen things up that that needed it. Not everything needed work, but um, they, and they that, definitely that, yeah. shook things up. I mean, yeah. there's, there's no doubt about it. The music was just so so broad and so so more so much more alive and 
yeah, it, it um, Lindsay Lynn did that sort of production attribute. I don't even know if he was even thinking of being that kind, had that yeah. in his head at the time of being a producer, but that's kind of how it went, right? It was just more or less, yeah, let's lay the found, let's lay the tracks right here. And this is what we got. And then, yeah, like you said, Christine just jumped on that and, and the, they're there. They just sort of clicked really, really well together. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think having that, that atmosphere of collaboration, right. Where, yeah, he's, you know, she's a musician, he's a musician. And again, Bob, you know, we can't discount Bob Welch for this, but he, he kind of kept the ship from not sinking. Bob Wells, yeah. but but they didn't really, but they were kind of treading water. The ship wasn't really they, going they anywhere, but it wasn't yeah. sinking. It was mm-hmm. just kind of you know, you know, album after album with not really anything changing or anything really happening. Right. But um, you know, once you get somebody who's super creative, like 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 Lindsay and Stevie, mm-hmm. uh, that have ideas to spare, uh, yeah, I think I think putting that putting her putting Christine in there just really brought out the best in her. Uh, yeah. Her stuff on rumors, I mean. I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna listen to rumors and and you're gonna say what's the prototypical song off of rumors, or the what's the first song I honestly what's the first song I think of when I think of rumors I think of you make love and fun. Yeah, absolutely. Like I don't think That's of the I don't 70s think of dream, right yeah I don't think of dreams <laughs> I don't think of go your own way. Yep. I think of the the way that song drops the way it starts with her mm-hmm. with that 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 weird you know keyboard sound that she has and you know his, Lindsay's licks and and just her. Her vocal on that is just so great. You know, she really kind of came into, her, you know, was really, uh, really blossomed. I think having having these people, you know, having this the, the band around her, where mm-hmm. you can kind of feel safe. It kind of felt, I think, despite of all the stuff and the drugs and everything that went on, that there was just a really creative spark that was going on. And Christine really kind of, really kind of brought it. I think she, I think, like I said, I think she really came into her own um, on the on the White Fleetwood Mac album, and then just got so much better. You know? Yeah, it did. You know, don't yeah. stop. It, it, another again, like she had a a lot of the hits. Everyone, you know, it's very easy. Like Stevie Nicks is is takes up a, a she's a big personality, um, yeah. with with dreams. But you know, you got don't don't stop. You make love and fun. You know, like those are those are again two of the big hits that were off of that album. Mm-hmm. You know, and then her concert staple, Songbird, which became Songbird, kind of her, which is which kind of came of her, became her nickname, right? And yeah, um, and it's one of her best. And you know. yeah, and it would mm-hmm. close every show like that. Like that became the closer. Is Songbird became that thing where it was just Christine out there, um, and when she did it during the dance, she sounded as she sounded almost exactly. I just watched it. Um, her her performance of Songbird from the dance, which was their reuniting in nineteen ninety seven, mm-hmm. she sounded just like as good as she did in seventy seven. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, the whole show. Yeah, but her yeah, the whole just like. It didn't age like Lindsey Buckingham sounds, you know, you got to kind of key it down, like go down a step or a key, or whatever, because his voice got kind of lower and, and and that kind of thing. Hers, it was just straight on. Like it, it sounded like yeah. time passed for and for all of her material that she did at the dance. Um, her voice I, did not be never betrayed her like she always no. was able just to deliver and 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 sound great each time it wasn't like oh you know oh she said what's you know stevie nicks went through that she went through that whole vibrato stage and then the very nasally stage and then she came out of it mm-hmm. where her voice was sounding strong again but christine throughout you know from from tusk to mirage to tango and on just was was always consistent you know yeah. and, and, for, and like we said forever the wearing her heart on her sleeve forever the romantic her songs were always very yeah Always love songs. She falls in love and she falls deep, you know? Right. And you could, you could argue that, yeah, okay. They're, some of them may be a little bit sappy or, or, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it just has that sort of puppy dog, you know, sort of innocence. Yeah. That innocence to them that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, but they work, they absolutely yeah. work. And I, you know, now the, you know, I, I, you know, I'm watching uh, Paramount Plus, and I'm and I, every other you know, like commercial is they're playing everywhere, like that commercial, the yeah. car commercial, where <laughs> I guess it's because she died. But and everybody's singing the song, and and you know, it, it's just such a, it's such a pleasurable song at this, but it also a very, it could also be a very like cringy type song. Yeah. Too, you know? It could be like, very, you know, it's very, be very, sh- you know, it's very, very sugary. corny. It's very, yeah, sugary. but it it just absolutely. Um, it works and it works in her favor because she does have that voice. Lindsay was able to actually do something 
with that level voice that she had and, and kind of make her voice sound a little bit higher on that record too. Yeah. You know, I, you know, there are certain parts of that record where I was like, is that, is that Christine? Wow. What, what is it? What's he doing there? Like sometimes, you know, you couldn't even tell uh, between him and her, you know, on, especially on tango where the production with all those backing vocals and yeah. you know, Lindsay likes to play with, you know, oh, 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 you know, all speed, that kind yeah, of stuff. Speed, speeds and, and speeds and all that. And sometimes <laughs> you couldn't even tell yeah. when he does it on Christine's songs, even on the, on their, their collaboration later on, yeah. he does that. And it's just, you know, so, and you can't even tell sometimes it's like, who's who, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is a good, which you is know, interesting. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. And, and for all of her love songs, let, let's be clear. She was, she certainly was no angel. She partook oh. <laughs> uh, in, in her share of the debauchery in the seventies. She went out with Brian, uh, Brian Wilson's brother, Dennis Wilson, who was yes. the biggest partier in the seventies and the eighties. He, yeah. he led, he led a life of excess. Uh, and those two were, were in it to win it together for a long time. Um, and, and actually that, that relationship probably wasn't good for either of them because you said she was like a mother. Um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what their relationship would be is, is Dennis Wilson would go and binge and, and do everything all weekend or all week and then come back to Christine and she would kind of mother him back to mm -hmm. sobriety and then you go do it all over again, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so again, let's, let's not forget that this was the seventies and Fleetwood Mac was one of the epitomes of that, uh, of partaking in the drug culture. So while her songs are, 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 are sweet and, uh, romantic and, and have great, uh, you know, lyric content about love and everything. She, she certainly wasn't, wasn't an angel and that she wasn't like a re raging addict, but mm -hmm. they all, they all partied and they were all a part of that lifestyle. But, but you, you know, she didn't make the headlines like Lindsay no. and Stevie did, for, yeah. you know, you know, it was always, you know, she was a little more reserved yeah. and, you know, it could be that again, that British thing, you know, that British reserve that, that just sort of, you know, steadfast, attitude that they have, you know, like, and just, they, they're able to conquer everything and, and deal with anything that comes their way. And it's just, um, or if everybody wants yeah. to ask, you know, Lindsay and Stevie about it, I'll sit back if, if you know, yeah, sure. like, like, yeah. you know, I don't need to put my business, like, I don't need to put my business out in the street, but they feel that's the right. Need, but like, that's exactly not only right. Put yeah. it in the street, but drive it out there and drop mm -hmm. it off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what the, the, <clears throat> And, and you'll, you'll remember this. I think we've told this before, but the very first music or the very first song I ever heard on a compact disc was Christine McVie. That's right. Cause, it, cause you, you had, yeah, you had the, the, the CD of Mirage. You had gotten it. One of the first people, the first person I ever knew that had a CD player. Uh, and, and, and you, you got you, me that you, CD. <laughs> you, you, you plug, you plugged in, you plugged, I remember it was on the head. It was on headphones. You plugged the headphones in, into the CD player. Yeah. And you put on Mirage and love in store, which was one, one of her best, uh, songs ever. I just love it. Just, it's just, you know, the, it really makes more, it really sets, it really opens up Mirage in, in a great way because it's after everything would happen with Tusk and how weird it was. And everyone was like kind of dismayed mm -hmm. by it. You know, Mirage was the quote unquote return to the classic Fleetwood Mac uh, form and love in store is just a great, it's just a great, uh, it's just yeah. a great song. It sounds great. It's, it's, it's got the pre it's in the eighties, but it's got the pre eighties slickness of tango in the night. It's still, it's still kind of grounded. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just a night, a nice, warm, well arranged and well produced sound. Um, and her stuff on that is just, you know, hold me. God, her, and Lindsay, I love when her and Lindsay, like, you know, they intermingle the vocals on hold me. That's right. Yeah. You know, they, they did it with don't stop. It, it, you can't almost tell, is it, is it Lindsay on top, uh, you know, on top and, and Christine, uh, under or is it christine on top and Lindsay supporting mm -hmm. you know i love their their vocal interplay uh is is one of the great things about fluid mac yeah because they were able to pitch wise and you know tone wise you know they were able to match each other's you know wherever they were you know, like whatever key they were singing and you know that's in the, you listen to Lindsay and stevie it's a, it's a big it's like night and day. It's, yeah, you know, it's different. It was it's, much it's, harder to. You it's know. great, but it's different. It's it's yeah, it's something different. Yeah. Their their mm -hmm. vocal harmonies are something different um, yeah. than than Christine and 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 Lindsay because they could actually sing yeah similar in in you know similar melody lines together and mm -hmm. not and have it not sound like someone different you know like you or the the way they would weave into each other. You kind of well, like that okay, goes to show how just how talented uh, they both were. And, you know, musically speaking, we're talking like just writing, composing, 
you know, that kind of thing, not just writing, you know, throwing out lyrics and, and singing, you know, whatever. Stevie does her own kind of way of doing things, but I'm not saying that she's not talented. It's just, but musically speaking, they, they really have those chops of, of knowing just where to put the harmonies, where to, you know, to, to integrate, you know, the, the pitch and the tone and, and all that. So yeah, it, it blends really well. And they, and that's the thing. I mean, they've always made such really great music together. You know, and, and you can listen to, you know, you love the songs because you love the lyrics. So you, you, you identify with a lot of what they're saying, but I, I just love the music. Yeah. You know, you just forget about the lyrics sometimes and just listen to what, what Lindsay's laying down on guitar. And then Christine has those, those keyboards that come in and come and go. And, you know, you know all those little flourishes that they didn't have to do in a band like that, because they certainly didn't do it before them. You know, like we yeah. talked, like we just mentioned, you know, they were just sort of very straightforward, but here they, you know, they, you know, Lindsay kind of set that bar high and, and yeah. Christine, yeah, Christine I think every, followed suit. Yeah. I think everybody, yeah. everybody wrote, wrote, you know, wrote in Fleetwood Mac, everybody rises, they, they tend to rise to the occasion, mm -hmm. you know, the, the original five, anything after that, you know, you could see the, the albums got worse and worse behind the mask and then time. Yeah, it just like, <laughs> like it, it was obvious that, it's not just putting people in and slapping the Fleetwood Mac name on it. It was the chemistry, uh, even mm -hmm. or the clashing or the arguing, whatever it is, whatever, whatever. I the would, I would argue, was. It's the musical chemistry. I think yeah. that is, that is, that works so well. Yeah. But whatever yeah. arguments they have to go through to get there and the fighting or the, or the, yeah. uh, or the deal making or whatever, you know, um, that that's, it, it's, it's those five people and those three vocalists that really made a special sound. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, I, I'm again, it really, you know, when I saw everything on social media, it really got me thinking, I really started thinking a, a lot harder about Christine. You know, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't realize, you know, how, how many people were affected by her. Like, oh my God, songbird. And mm -hmm. oh, you know, I, I'm devastated. And I was kind of like, I, I don't know why it surprised me, but it kind of did. And it made me really kind of start, I, you know, I was sitting down and just thinking about Christine. I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, uh, it's so easy for me because I'm such a, such a, you know, a Lindsey Buckingham Homer and a Buckingham apologist that the conversation is going to, is going to be about him usually. Um, and that's why I wanted to do this episode, right? We agreed mm -hmm. that, you know, you know, I, you know, we really need to kind of honor her and, yeah. and, 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 let people know that yeah she she was very low key but that doesn't mean she wasn't formidable that means just because she she stayed in the background that doesn't mean her music wasn't and like i said like we just said before she had a lot of the hits you know the, the hits <laughs> usually were you yeah. know Lindsay would do the crazy stuff so that stuff is not really too radio friendly you know no um so you had to rely on on then you had to rely on christine and stevie to kind of get something that's going to get hit worthy not something yeah. that, you know, the critics like the Lindsay stuff because it's out there and it, it's, you know, different More artful different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But the radio <laughs> people like, like Little Lies and, and Seven Wonders and Gypsy and that kind of stuff. And, and that's where that's where, you know, Christine and Stevie come in to kind of provide that. And mm -hmm. uh, like like Little Lies on Tango, you know, I know you don't like that album. It can it is can be overproduced, but Little Lies, I think, is a gem. It's, it's one of it's, those. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's one of those ones, again, with Lindsay kind of supporting you know, they're not singing together, but he's there. He's always, he's kind of there, you know? Yeah. Well, I always, I always enjoyed the songs where they, all three of them, even I'm like love in store is, is yeah. another great example where all three of them are singing. Stevie is very prominent on that yeah. song as well. And that was always, it's always a shame to me that they, there wasn't enough of that. You yeah. know, I always liked it that better. Like, you know, you participate, be on the song. Let's do, you know, put your differences aside and just, you know, let's, let's collaborate here. I, I it was, it's very frustrating to me that they just couldn't get that stuff together all the time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was sometimes they just go off and they just Lindsay very begrudgingly would have to work with Stevie on her songs. And just like we talked about with Tusk it's very minimal, like, you know, but with Christine, he'll go all full tilt. Like he'll do a whole, you know, big yeah, I, <coughs> harmony vocals thing. And, and, you know, and just really, really enjoy the, the, the time working with her. And it's just a shame that they, they couldn't do this. Yeah. The I, I think, well, I time, think Christine wants you know? that. I think that Christine wants that too, though. She, she yeah. really feels simpatico with Lindsay. Like, yeah, I, I can give him stuff that I feel isn't, isn't up to snuff and he'll, he'll work on it and he'll bring it and he'll, he'll kind of just put that final, yeah. final polish on the apple. 
you know, Stevie Nicks doesn't really need that. She's Stevie Nicks, right? <laughs> she's, no, I, no, me really. Like she's going to come with her, with her lyrics in hand and she's going to, you know, and he'll, yeah. Yeah, he's going to work on the song and, and okay, let's do this or let's do that. Right. And kind of produce the song. Right. But, but I'm sure she never felt, oh, I need, I need this. She's got her own ideas. She's got her own style of songwriting, right? She's very, very much a, 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 as a, you know, as a member of Fleetwood Mac and a solo artist, a very self-contained unit, right? So, so she's going to bring, you know, she's got her own thing going on and then she brings it to Fleetwood Mac and Lindsay's the same way, right? How many times did Lindsay, how many solo albums was Lindsay working on? And they said, okay, <laughs> For, we need to do a Fleetwood Mac album and he just brings the yeah, solo after stuff. Tusk, right? I think that was pretty much the case though, every time. Right. Right. So he started working on something by himself and he would just yeah. bring those songs in already complete. Just, you just need to polish them up a yeah. bit and you know, don't even need to play. You guys don't even need to play, but Christine would, would always have that spirit of collaboration of, yeah, yeah let's, let's, you know, you and me, Lindsay write a song together or let's do this together. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't see that with, you didn't really see it with, I don't, I can't recall a, a, a song where there's a Stevie Nicks and a Christine McVie vocal. Where they're trading, yeah, where they're true. trading, right? They, you would right. think that would be a golden opportunity. I've never heard a, a duet with them or anything like, as like "Hold Me" or or "Don't Stop," where where you can that tell it's true. them yeah. singing, singing together. It was mm -hmm. you know very compartmentalized, except for for Christine and Lindsay. They would again. I think it's that music. I think that's it's that musician thing too. Like it's something separate. You know when, when yeah. You know, the four of them as a unit, you know, which we'll get to the, you know, the final album, you know, that's a musical unit there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, I'm not trying to exclude Stevie Nicks, but, I, and she, I believe she plays piano, right. To write her songs on maybe some guitar, but you never see her on stage strumming guitar. I've never seen her on stage strumming a guitar. Right. right. So, so there's kind of like, okay, well, she's a vocalist. And again, not trying to exclude her in that way, but it's different when there's four musicians, right. Cause you're on a different level. Cause you're playing together. Yeah, it's musical cues. You're, you kind of have to really key into each other. So I think that that put them on a different, uh, a different level of collaboration as well. Because there's that musical thing where you're thinking about things musically, not just when is when is this person going to start singing, you know, and I have to have my solo done. And it's very easy for someone like Lindsay to uh, dismiss Stevie Nicks as such, I think too, because he doesn't. You know, you don't see her coming in and sitting at a piano and like, okay. Let's do, let's play in this key and let's work on that. You know, like, no, it's like, it's very much adding his little flourishes to her songs. And I, I, I mentioned, I said this a million times, but nobody makes her sound as good as Lindsey Buckingham ever did, you know, working on her songs as little or as much as he did. Her songs always were the better. You know, I, I prefer her Fleetwood Mac stuff over her solo stuff in that, in that regard, because Lindsey made those songs stronger in my opinion, but but on the other hand, it's like, yeah, I can come to Christine and I can and we can just we don't even have to sing. We can just like play like a nice yeah. little melody and come up with something there and, and and just, you know, work on that first. That must be like a breath of fresh air for yeah. for a musician to be able to collaborate like that. Yeah. yeah ta you know, toss so. musical ideas around or without yeah. without lyrics. Sure. And say, OK, let's let's construct a song. Let's write a song together, which is, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I said, it's, again, I'm not trying to bash Stevie Nicks. It's just a different. <laughs> it's just a, no. It's just a different dynamic, right? It, it is. It really it, it, is it, a different dynamic within the right. band. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, and then and that, but then Stevie and Lindsay would have that because they had that that intangible that they had worked together beforehand. So they're bringing kind of they know how each other uh, each other works, right? And I'm sure you know mm -hmm. Stevie comes in with her lyrics and she's got a way of writing. And I, I don't know that someone could co-write a song with her like that. In, in that way, I know she's co-written songs in the past, but um, not not as a, a normal thing. She pretty much has her poetry. Yeah, because her her, 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 her lyrics are pretty out there. Like Lindsay's out there musically. Yeah. Stevie's out there with her, you know, her black magic and you know writing songs. We have no idea what they're about, but they're just you know some, they sometimes they have a point, sometimes they don't. Even she admitted that I don't know what this song's about you know, <laughs> yeah, necessarily channeling but it's like poetry right it's just yeah. she's sitting down and, and there's a, there's something to that there's something to be said of that as well you know but uh absolutely absolutely but so uh, we didn't really talk we we kind of skipped over tusk a little bit because we did we did do a whole episode on tusk but mm -hmm. um and, and we did we did actually talk about christine uh quite a bit uh, in that episode but um, yeah. th this was like their, you know, for again, you know, not to rehash it, but just briefly, Tusk was kind of like their magnum opus, you know, like the lost classic after rumors, which was kind of 
shuffled off to Buffalo when it came out, but now has been kind of looked back on as as an understated classic in some ways. Their better, artistic, better, piece, yeah, their, yeah, their, yeah, their statement, piece. their ultimate statement, yeah. in that way, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and a double mm-hmm. album, so everyone's got enough room to kind of spread out and and try some some different things. And again, Christine McVie opens opens that album with over and over, which really kind of sets. It, again, it's the another, mood. it's another, yeah, it's another tone setter. It's a, it, yeah, it really most. does like, because the ledge right after it is kind of, it go, it kind of goes <laughs> off the reservation, but you know, yeah. And, and then think about me, which is, it kind of recalls to me, like, don't stop. Cause it's, again, it's got, oh, the, yeah. it's yeah. got the intertwining vocal with her and Lindsay. And I, I, we, it seems like we get that almost on every album. We didn't, we didn't mm-hmm. really get it on Mirage too much, but we've got, you've got don't stop. Uh, you've got world turning on, on their first album where they're singing mm-hmm. together. Uh, don't stop. And now you've got, uh, think about me and then you've got hold me. Um, so there really is that, you know, we, you can kind of chart the, chart the collaboration between those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and then she's got nice little nuggets on that record too. Oh yeah. Uh, honey, honey high. Is, high yeah, and one of my I love that little sort of like sitting around the campfire kind of feel like, and they each have a little vocal part, which I love. Again, yeah. the, you know, when they all contribute a little something is always the best. Doesn't happen all the time, but I, I, you know, yeah. that's why I appreciate those songs much more. You know, yeah. And from from uh, the less is more category, make, never make me cry. Yeah, it's got bare brown, brown eyes. Very, yep. very, very, very sparse instrumentation on never make me cry. Um, it's kind of like songbird. Yeah, it is. It, it's yeah. it's her vocal, like, yeah. And, and she can, you know, she's the one in the group that can do that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Stevie kind of has, you know, she kind of got away from it. She would do stuff like landslide and, and some of that really kind of delicate underproduced stuff. But as she went on, her songs kind of got bigger and bigger in, in yeah. scope. Um, but Christine was always able, you know, for Christine, it was always the voice first. Like her voice mm-hmm. it will, you, you could build the song around her voice. You know, you, you, if you don't want to go with a lot of instrumentation, you, you don't need to worry about it. You know, like, like I said, you know, Stevie in, in the mid eighties, it was kind of an unknown factor. Her voice really wasn't kind of where it needed to be. Um, but with Christine, it's kind of like, yeah, her voice is her voice first. Well, I think it, it, it kind of songbird set that standard, you know, because I think they recorded it, um, in a, in a, in a, in a concert hall, you know, so you have that tremendous vault, you know, reverb hitting, you know, you don't even need to do anything with the song, you know, production wise, because, you know, you're already getting that, that great, great sound yeah. uh, from the room itself. But then that became sort mm-hmm. of her, her shtick. And, and in a way it, it recalls the the singer songwriters like Carol King and, and Joni Mitchell in the, in the early days when they were doing those very sparse kinds of things. I think of blue, like Joni Mitchell's blue, mm-hmm. where it's, you know, it's very more piano heavy than guitar. Than acoustic guitar, you know, so it's kind of like that, uh, that melancholia to it. And, you know, and then later on, people like Nora Jones would come in and, and do that, you know, very sort of sitting at the piano and just sort of, you know, uh, in the room kind of feel and just those little, those little ballads. I, I, I love that. I love that little, you know, those little moments. And uh, Christine was certainly, uh, she was, she did it really, really well. Yeah. And, uh, Yep. Yeah, she she had a certain zone and and she didn't you didn't hear, you know, and again, there's it's not anything wrong with it because there's a place for it. She didn't do anything crazy, you know, there was nothing mm-hmm. experimental. There was no crazy Christine McVie album where it was just like off the reservation type thing. It was very she, on she, the sleeve stuff, yeah, very she, off. You yeah, know, she just, has her style and she kind of yeah. and she stuck with it. But again, that's the kind of the grounding force um that that you needed so you could listen to Fleetwood Mac albums and hear some strange stuff. Mm-hmm. And then understand that you're going to have some, you know, if that wasn't your cup of tea, you know, you're going to get the, the the Fleetwood Mac stuff out of Christine and Stevie. So, yeah. Um, so that, that the five of them would kind of tr- soldier on until 87. Uh, they would, that the first explosion would happen there with, with Lindsay Buckingham leaving or being fired, whatever the story is. Mm. Um, and then Fleetwood Mac would kind of trot on like they always do start slotting people in. Um, and then eventually Christine left too. You know, her, her, her intent with, with the album called time, which came out in 95 and that was with, uh, Becca Bramlett and, you know, uh, Dave Bill, Mason, Dave Mason. I mean, they're just getting, you know, <laughs> like who uh, wants to know, join? Here I'm, we Eric, go. I'm surprised you weren't on it because they were just got, you know, there's getting everybody, whoever was available. I just go out there. And, and you it. know what? I had it. I listened to it. Yeah. I, it's not, it's, it's, 
if you didn't know that was Fleetwood Mac, there you okay, go. It's actually a decent sounding record. I mean, the music is is pretty solid. I mean, I I it's nice stuff. I mean, it, it, it's just very very seventies, very sort of its time, I guess. But this came out in the nineties. This yeah. was like a you know <laughs> a return to form. And where they got Becca Bramlett from, you know, the the daughter of uh, Bonnie. Bonnie and yeah. and Delaney Bramlett. Um, the early days of you know that's the early 70s stuff that blues that southern blues rock type of thing and <laughs> but i thought you know it, it, i think they were trying to go for that they were trying to go for that that you know which is something they really never really did yeah was to yeah. go that route and, and it just it didn't uh they it didn't going, quite work <laughs> they were go, they were going for something yeah and christine was still very much there yeah in the group and still contributing though her her songs just and again nothing you know nothing radically different same steadfast yeah. sound that she yeah. does, you know. She, she had made it known though at that point that this was going to be it. Like this is going to be my last yeah. Fleetwood Mac album. It's you know time to time to ride off in the, into the sunset. One of the reasons um, she started to become afraid of flying. You know, she started yeah. to get a, a fear of flying, so that was starting to creep in a little bit. Um, by ninety, by that, by ninety five, you know, Stevie Nicks actually leaves Fleetwood Mac, but right before that, uh, after Behind the Mask, but before Time. So she mm-hmm. takes a powder. So if you know if Stevie, if Stevie's leaving, you know things are really bad. Then she, you know, if there's, there's probably nothing, no, no juice left in the lemon if she's leaving it. Um, yeah. And then you know, Steve uh, Fleetwood Mac would go dormant until, till ninety six or whatever, when you know Bill Clinton asks him to reunite and play for his inauguration or whatever it was. Um, and then ninety seven, the dance where they mm-hmm. kind of all mended fences and just came roaring back. I mean, they came back in a big way, much like the yeah. Eagles and hell freezes over, which was like a year or two, maybe before, um, Fleetwood Mac did the same thing. Mm-hmm. They just really kind of pulled it together and said, here's, this is why, this is what Fleetwood Mac is about. Here it is. You got, you know, this is what you guys have been missing. And they really kind of just rolled out that show. And then that tour, the dance tour. Did you see them on that tour? I did. You did. Amazing. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, you know, I'd seen them once. My very first concert was Fleetwood Mac in 82 on the Mirage tour. And then I saw him again for the dance and it was just, uh, yeah. you know, everything you wanted it to be, you know, they, it you was know. a kind of a blur for me, but, yeah. uh, but it was very much, you know, if you watch the, uh, you watch the dance, that's it. The whole video. You know, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. But there was a few more songs added to the set list when I saw them, uh, Lindsay doing, I distinctly remember Lindsay doing the worm mm-hmm. on stage. He was just Fucking He's always nuts. crazy. I mean, <laughs> that's what that's the that's the one takeaway that I remember from that show. He, he loses himself. Um, yeah. In the music. Um, but yeah, very solid, very, you know, and again, they, they, they all sounded great. And that was a like they garnered a whole new audience too with that album, too. I mean, it wasn't yeah. just, oh, it's just another album of like a greatest hits type. It is it's just another live album. It, it was a little bit of both, but it, they also had new material on there. Yep. They were introducing something that was on the horizon that would come later. Um, and yeah, it, 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 my wife became a Fleetwood Mac fan because of that album, not because of rumors, but because of that record. And you would go back and listen to rumors and, and, this, and I kind of introduced her to those, to those older records, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was just yeah, so, it became so a damn fan good as a result. Sure. Yeah, just a great if you want if you really want to hear a, a great comeback success story and, and get the greatest hits, but but in a live thing, de- definitely pick up the dance. It's it's on vinyl too. I picked it up on vinyl uh, I think earlier this year. It's a it's a stellar performance, and yeah. it's also like you get you're getting every all the great stuff too. I mean, it's just everything you want to hear is on that record. You know, a lot of rumors, you know, quite a few from the White Album. There's you know, and just again, and and a very even uh keel too they all have just the right amount of songs that, yeah. you know they each do you know it's not Even like Lindsay's leading the charge as usual yeah. <laughs> but yeah but no there's there's plenty to, to you know they all have equal equal say so to speak so yeah. yeah so they they would they would tie up that tour in 98 and then christine mcvee officially <clears throat> would leave fleetwood mac so that would leave fleetwood mac with just four members uh buckingham mm-hmm. nicks mcvee and and mcfleetwood they would record uh, "Say You Will." Christine would actually play on on a couple of those tracks, uh, mm-hmm. uncredited, but but not as a member of Fleetwood Mac. So she was adamant about that. And I think in in '04 or '06 she did release um, a solo. She had done a solo album in the '80s, and she got that song "Got a Hold on Me," which was 
again, very much yeah. in, 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 in the Fleetwood Mac, you could, sl- you could have slotted that in on any of their albums. And, and some notable people on that record, Eric yeah. Clapton, Clapton plays on it. Yep. Steve Winwood plays on it. Um, so yeah, yeah she, there's a lot some, of help. some, some, yeah, <laughs> so she got some heavy yeah. hitters to help her. That's right. Yep. Um, so she would do a solo album in, in 04 or 06. And retrospectively, she said, yeah, probably, you know, we just didn't go about it the right way. Um, and then she started, I, I think it was, she was talking to Mick Fleetwood or something. And, and Mick was, Mick was the one that helped her get over the fear of flying. Mm. And kind of, you know, I think it was in Hawaii. He said, come, you know, come, come see me or something. And, or, or he flew out, I think he flew to England and then flew back with her to Hawaii where he, he was living. Um, okay. And helped her kind of get over that. So in 2014, she rejoins Fleetwood Mac. Said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm back again. So, you know, everyone, you know, it was kind of like, okay, you know, I, you know, Fleetwood Mac has in the, has been in the legacy since, since what, since say you will. So that came out in 2000, what, two. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been in legacy mode, you know, they've just been, you know, it's just the, the, the jukebox tour just kind of, Right. Going through everything. So, it, you know, it was great. It's great to get her back into the mix, but, but there was something, you know, uh, unfinished business, you know, which, which, yeah, Mick, I'll which, say. Yeah. which, which Mick <laughs> Fleetwood and Lindsey Buckingham felt they, they, you know, Lindsey Buckingham, I think around 2014, I mean, 2015, 2016 is like, you know, there, there's, there's, we got to do one more album, one more Fleetwood Mac album to close the, close the book on it. And, and we can even stop touring, you know, like let's, mm-hmm. you know, let's kind of do it. McFleetwood had said uh, in 2016, uh, there's a ton of, there is a ton of music that is done, but we have virtually nothing from Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Okay. So they, they, they want to do another Fleetwood Mac album. That, that is the intent and, and the machinations were there, but Stevie Nicks for some reason or another, either did not have any material or, trepidatious about doing stuff you know i i had a theory I, I don't think we talked about it off off podcast that i think the the well has run dry with her perhaps mm-hmm. um just lacking inspiration you know you you go into just tour after tour of greatest hits tours and that's how you make your money um and yeah, that creative well, spark kind of well she did have a wealth of <laughs> she d- had a lot of uh apparently a lot of songs in the closet so to speak or in the you know yeah. you know that needed some dusting off she contributed quite a few songs to say you will yeah. so it's not a true album from that sense where they built it up and did it on the spot there were a lot of you know Lindsay, uh most of his songs were from uh so uh, the great solo solo album that would have been yeah uh gift of screws that kind of made up what that album was about but yeah, I mean, she, but apparently she had a whole like bunch of songs, sort of like songs in the attic type of thing where she wanted to kind of tour that and bring that out to the, you know, you know, so she was working on that apparently, I think at that, at that point in time too. So, but songs that nobody ever really heard, but they weren't brand new. They were, you know, but you're right. She wasn't like creatively doing it at the piano, you know, producing new songs. And and she even said, she goes, I don't even want to make albums anymore. They're a drag They're They take too long. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of a shame to, to hear yeah. that, you know? Yeah. It's about, you know, it's very, still very much in the mode of, I still want to create, I yeah. still want to, you know, get out there and, and show the world that we still have it. Yeah. You know? and, and Christine was up for yeah. it. Of course, Mick Fleetwood, you know, is up for anything. Uh, and John McVie was up for it. So, so the four of them went into the studio. In yep. 2016, and and in a true collaborative style, that you know, uh, Christine and, and Lindsay co-wrote three songs together, mm-hmm. um, and and it was supposed to be a Fleetwood Mac album. I contend that they should have just, and what what the result was was it was just it was called Lindsay Buckingham, Christine McVie. So it was it mm-hmm. was a, du- a duet album. It was an album of just those two, but with Mick Fleetwood and John McVie. So this, in essence, is say you will minus. Yeah. Stevie Nicks, but with Christine McVie. That's right. Um, I, I don't, you know, I, I it kind of bothers me. They they could have put this out as a Fleetwood Mac album. It doesn't mean that Stevie Nicks is out of Fleetwood Mac if she doesn't contribute. She doesn't have to contribute. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean she's thrown out of the group. I totally agree. Right? Or she yeah. could have just given, yeah, she could have given one or two stuff that was laying around. Lindsay would have would have produced it up and they could have thrown it on there. That yeah. that being said, um, it should have been the, this album should have, the more I'm listening to it, this should have been the last Fully Mac album because it is actually an understated gem. Yeah. You know, repeated when you, listening, you, you, you really get that sense that it's, uh, 
you know, when I first heard it, it was like, yeah, it's it's a nice album, but it didn't really grab me right away. And it, and it just, but I, you know, the more you listen to it, especially those three collaborations, those songs yeah, they like, wrote together. Too, do you hear? Do you listen to Too Far Gone? Too Far Gone is if, if you if you put if they put that that's out like World Turning. It's like yeah, like back to that those those days of yeah. If if that came out and they said this is the new single from Fleetwood Mac, people would have lost their shit. Yeah, because it is so. It is a hard rocking song. It's bluesy. It's got the it's got buckingham's guitar mm-hmm. and it's, her vocal is fantastic I, i'm hearing that song i'm like jesus like like what yeah. could, like why couldn't this have been called a fleetwood mac album like why you know why would they again i i know i come down on her but why why <laughs> buckle why buckle to her everybody else has to bu- has to go to her whims why buckle to her why not just say we're, we're this is going to be a fleetwood mac album you want to contribute fine you don't that's okay too yeah you're still in fleetwood mac you don't have to contribute to this, but it's well, a Fleetwood I, Mac let's, project. Let, well, let's 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 take that side of it. And and I remember the days back in the Tango days where everybody was coming down hard on Lindsay because he didn't want to tour. Yeah, and that was the reason why he left. He right? always but gets chucked because of that. He gets, but but he <laughs> did the work though. I mean, he produced yeah. that that album. That you know, they helped. That <laughs> album was made. It was out there. It was yeah. you know they were they were creating new music, and they gave him shit for not wanting to tour. Yeah. Oh, so you're 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 out. You know whatever. Since when does Stevie have the say? Like that's the thing that always gets in, and there's no doubt about the fact that she's the one that calling the shots him out of out of yeah. the band. Yeah, you know, absolutely. No, there's no doubt about that. Absolutely. So, so, so I, this, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> no, but 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 it's you know, you know this album. If it, it, it kind of came and went because it was called yeah. Lindsey Buckingham and Christine McVie, you kind of you know it doesn't have the no, I agree the, the yeah. name recognition that you know that a Fleetwood Mac album would have. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially if if it was you know what 2002 so this would have been 15 years between albums so there would have been a lot of like demand or a lot of at least interest hey oh there's a new Fleetwood Mac album 15 years let's you know people you know reviewers or whatever would have been checking it out and it kind of came and went and it kind of came and went in my life too it kind of came out and I was like yeah like whatever yeah like I I kind of brushed it I'm like yeah whatever Uh, but I could I can understand though if they had released it that way number one either Stevie probably would have lost her shit about that. And number two, it probably wouldn't have sold as well because Stevie wasn't on it. Too bad. I, I, I tell you, I, tell, I agree, but that would have been, people would have been like, where's Stevie Nicks? You know, that's the thing. That's so why you, like, you so, know what you get her, you get her to get, give us two songs. We'll, we'll work them up. Yeah. Come in to lay the vocal and leave, you know, yeah, like give us, give us two of your older songs that yeah. come into the studio for a day and, and on, let Lindsay, you know, do his ding. And, and cause he, he certainly did that on say you will. Yeah. There's that one song that, you know, everybody finds out, which I think is fantastic. I mean, it's it, but you could definitely tell it's from those days of like the wild heart and, you know, rock a little because it has that heavy synthesizer. That's not Lindsay playing that synthesizer. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's that very 80s, you know, you know, but he added those guitars, his vocals to that song. And it, it's one of the best songs on the record from her because it's so rocking. And so and it really gets you going. And and then, of course, Mick and John on that is astounding. The rhythm section is, is so yeah. tight. Yeah, these guys they are, could have done the exact same thing. Yeah, just yeah, they, one or they, two songs, three songs. Yeah, they're no, know? they're no, none of them are, are strangers to recycling old material. That's pretty much what right. Buckingham does is, is his solo stuff kind of. It's, sure. It's brought forward. The good thing about it is we've got, you know, 10 songs, every other one. So one's a, one's a Lindsay song, one's a Christine song. And mm-hmm. you get this just nice point counterpoint. Lindsay's not too crazy. You know, he's kind of, he's kind of left a lot of that craziness behind. There's just enough to make it interesting. Yeah. Um, just like, like feel about you like that. That's got Lindsay all over it. That song, you know? Like it's because it's, it's just so strange. There, you know, like, it's the, like the, the for me, the opening track with the vocal, like yeah. he comes in with that dramatic, like vocal, you know, like. But, um, yeah, but but no, it was very, it was it was cool of him to kind of lay, you know, step back and with that and just yeah, it served the album really well because it was just him and Christine. Yeah, they collaborated. You know? They they said that you know they did it really good. Everybody was you know, there's a lot of material on YouTube about it. Interviews like the energy mm-hmm. was great. Uh, and you can hear it like the, the album just has a punchy sound to it. Uh, it's it's easy to listen to. She's in great voice, Christine. Again, yeah. she doesn't, you know, uh, what f- was that? Uh, 2017. So that's five years ago. So she was like 74. Yeah. You know, uh, still sound fantastic. Again, like like on uh, like I said, Too Far Gone. That's like a that's a ripping song. 
mm-hmm. you know, and, and Mick has got some drum work in there. It's just really like th- they proved that they were kind of still vital. Yeah. Like it, it's, this is not, a, I thought when it came out full, you know, I thought it was a throwaway album and I didn't pay it much mind. And I'm sad I did. Cause I've only gotten into it within the past year or two that it was like, wow. Like I really missed the boat on this red sun yeah. by her. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, carnival, like everything on here is just really good. There's maybe one clunker and it might be Lindsay might be like laid down for free or on with the show. It's like, you know, <laughs> like really like, like that, that's, a, no, that's I a, actually like on with the show. I think it's a nice, it might it, be laid it, down it, for free. That might be like, it's like, uh. I think on with the show is, is, it says something about like, he actually wrote a song about the band. Yeah. You know, there's some, the lyrics, you know, they pretend if Stevie were part of this would have been the perfect, like show closer or, or somewhere in the middle of that, of that, of that tour it would have been a great, great, you know, and yeah. I'm sure they did. They, I'm sure they performed it. Right. I mean, when they toured, they did eight of the songs from the album. I don't know which eight. And then they kind of, then they did some of their, you know, Lindsay okay. did some of the solo stuff and, and other stuff. Yeah. But, but if you've got four fifths of the band recording an album, uh, you know, again, it, if, if it's really is a democracy, she's got to be, she's got to be forced into the studio. Then say, you you know, come in. Like that's yeah. it, you know. Uh, but what we got was this great collaboration where Christine said, "You know what? I had some songs that were kind of a little, little on the rough edge, and I gave them to Lindsay, and he made them better, you know. And they just have mm-hmm. that mutual respect for each other, and she can understand what what he brings, and and he loves working with her. I mean, you know, you can hear it, you can just hear how well they kind of, you know, how well they mesh. I just wish it just had the Fleetwood Mac." It would have been great if it had the Fleetwood Mac name on it. It would have been a, a great way to a great coda for the career because now you're never going to get that. It's it's done. Do you think you know? that this album would have been exactly the same, or that would you do you think they would have just taken those three songs they wrote together, maybe a couple of the songs, and what do you think Lindsay would have used other tracks for for a full on Fleetwood Mac album? Nah, and, you, you know, just drop you drop drop two. Tra- All you have to do is drop two of the weakest tracks. Mm-hmm. If give Stevie two songs if she's not that interested, <clears throat> this way she saves face, and and there you go. You le- you leave the album pretty much. I don't see that they would change anything. And if she wanted to come in and do backing vocals, you could very easily have, have all those songs have you know too far gone. All those all those songs would have been enhanced. I could absolutely mm-hmm. had listened to it and said, you know what, I could have I I would have liked to have heard Stevie in there. Mm-hmm. on a couple of those songs when they're, when they're all singing together it's like she she was missed like she i think she missed the opportunity i think it was a, a missed opportunity on her point you know because she could have just yeah. come in and just you know they they were working quicker and yeah maybe maybe say you will wasn't the greatest experience but that was like 15 years earlier you know yeah. and christine wasn't in the band and, and record the ways of recording have changed in 2002 now everything's is very digital and very quick and very kind mm-hmm. of off the cuff and, and they knock it out, you know? Right. Um, mm-hmm. So, so it might've been a different experience for her and maybe not, not so, dr- you know, such a drudgery for her. Um, I, I, I guess she didn't give it a chance and it's, you know, I just, I personally think that she just doesn't like working with Lindsay. Uh-huh. It's, it's bringing back all of that old stuff again. I, I really think that's the reason I don't, I, if it had been another situation, she most certainly would have, Come yeah. come in and done it. You know, if somebody asked her to do an album, yeah, you but know. they were all, they were still at that point. They were all still touring together. Still, they were still on like the evening with Fleetwood Mac tour. Everything was okay in Fleetwood Mac land because they were still a touring concern. Yeah, uh, that whole issue didn't happen until like the next year or the year after that. So there was yeah, but still, I mean, they, they still there. So they were every still, every tour every time they still have their ups and downs. Say yeah. you will was a big you know you saw that in the documentary they made about that record, and, you, and then they went on tour for that, and I'm sure there were issues that would that happened you know especially on that tour since it was just the two of them yeah <laughs> i could just imagine the the nonsense that went on there but perhaps maybe that was it for her maybe that I, i'm done just you know i'm done with Lindsay calling the shots i'm you know yeah. whatever maybe i don't know maybe that's the case but it's too bad i don't know it, missed, it really missed, is too bad yeah it in, really in hindsight is. now now you can't go back so it's, it's a missed opportunity we will never that's right unfortunately we will never have the the full fleetwood mac because you know the songbird is has kind of flown out of the nest and she's she's gone on and and uh you know we're all a little bit less especially if you're a music fan and especially if you're a fleetwood mac fan you're a lot less for for you know having lost her this you know this past uh, november 30th it's um, it you know when i go if i go back and listen to say you will now 
that album was not, you know, now we, we kind of took that album for granted because, you know, Christine's not on it. Yeah. But we, you know, we, we knew she was still around, but now we know that she's not. Yeah. That album's going to be a little bit harder to listen to, I think, because again, a, a missed opportunity. I yeah. she, you know, her fear of flying or whatever the reasons were, she quit. Again, it could have been another great. Yeah, just retired. Yeah, at that point, she was another great album. Yeah, you know, pe- so. people think. I, I guess it. You know, what was she like? That was what uh, twenty-two years ago. So she was yeah. uh, what fifty something. Again, oh, how many of these artists in their fifties or forties say they're retiring because they think they're done? Like yeah. Elton John, how many last tours does he have? Right, <laughs> right. And and and, yep. and you're still viable at six, <laughs> at, at sixty. You're still touring. At sixty-five, you're still touring. At seven, like. They, yeah. they don't, they, they think, in, I, I guess in their mind, they have an end game of, okay, I, I, who does this when they're 50 or 60, mm-hmm. but it's not the same 60. So, someone who's 60 now is not the same as somebody who was 60 back in the, back in the seventies or the fifties or whatever, you know, people yeah. are much more vital and, and they have much more longevity. So I thought she figured like, okay, well, I'm pretty much done. What do I have left? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so say you will was kind of like, okay, well she's retired, but she came back and she came back stronger and, and she delivered this go. You guys have to, uh, it's on Spotify. It's called Lindsay yeah. Buckingham, Christine McVie. Uh, I, I get, you know, her final statement. I mean, she continued to tour with Fleet Renac up until this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, their, their tour like wound up with, uh, you know, with uh, Neil Finn and uh, Mike Campbell um, at replacing Lindsay and Fleetwood Mac. So, but, but as far as a, a recorded statement, um, I, I think this it's, it. It, I think it is apropos that it was her and Lindsay. Yeah, because they were the two that, you know, of of the of the singers and of the songwriters that were the collaborative spark with each other. So That's in right. that in that aspect, it, it's apropos that uh, her her final recording would be with Lindsay and that he would bring really kind of bring out the best in her because he really did. She sounds fantastic on this album, and the songs are all just, you know, uh, and the just, older stuff is going to sound that much sweeter. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I was listening to the White Album today. I was listening to right. Say You Love Me and Sugar Daddy, which I haven't Warm listened to that. And, yeah, yeah, I haven't listened to any of those songs in ages. And I was like, Over My Head is like yeah. uh, an, absolute, an absolute favorite of mine. Yeah. Just, you know, Lindsay's guitar on that, those little finger picking things that he does at the very end. And it just, you know, yeah. Yeah, and they didn't, know, just, and they didn't you know, know anything from anything on that album. They were just getting to know each other. That's right. And it was, yeah, it was it hit number one, right? So that, that should tell you right there that it was something special. And Christine was always... You know, like I said, from from 1970, essentially from, you know, playing with them since 68. So essentially a member since the beginning of mm-hmm. Fleetwood Mac in one form or another. And she was really the glue that through the lean times when, when like I said, when uh, when guitarists, when lead guitarists and lead singers were coming and going, like Christine, <laughs> yeah. Christine was still there just kind of providing and, and learning her craft and kind of getting getting better and figuring her way out. And then, like I said, when once Buckingham and Nick's joined, it, you know, Everybody, everybody got an increase in, in experience points and, and upgrades in songwriting ability and just because of the collaboration and just finding yeah. that right mix of people that you feel comfortable with and to bring out the best of you. They they did that for each other. That's the thing about Fleetwood Mac is they all, you know, mm-hmm. Christine, I'm sure, brought out, you know, the, the best stuff in Lindsay and having those collaborators and, and Stevie as well, you know, having all these people to bounce things off of. Uh, even though they're individual songwriters, in the end, they're all in the room together. She was a, a craft. I, I just, I, I had just read that she was a very calming effect. She's the only one apparently that could calm Lindsey Buckingham down. Christine, when things got really heated between him and Stevie, like at times they would, you know, it would result in some almost physical, you know, physical stuff. And and Christine was always the one that was like pushing Stevie out of the room. Lindsey, come come sit down. Uh, the, again, the mother hen trying to, you know enough of this bullshit, you know, let's just get, you know, get on with it. And, you know, so yeah, the, mu- the yeah. music, the music world's a little bit less, uh, I, yeah, for, for, for us losing too, too frequent these days of these people yeah. just, but we've got the great music. That that's the great thing is you can yep. go back and you can, you know, listen to, oh, you know, I, I think I'm going to listen to Tusk, <laughs> you know, I, I no, honestly, yeah. like, you know, cause there's a lot of material on there and, 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 and her stuff will probably be even more of a bigger counterpoint because of how weird the other stuff is mm-hmm. that I think, you know, I think listen, I think for me listening to Tusk will really kind of highlight it because it'll, it's really, it, it won't get lost in the sauce because it's so different that it'll, it'll really kind of stand out for me. And I think, I, I think I'm going to give Tusk a listen. I think that's the one. 
Yeah. Brown eyes. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. <laughs> I might listen to everything. Yeah. <laughs> I might go back and just, Well, I was, you know. I was cherry picking some stuff, but I think Tusk might be a nice, just a, a sit down and listen to it. I might actually it was there, go back you know. and listen to the dance, to be honest. I mean, I might, I don't, I had the video, but I don't have it anymore. So I might have to look for that. But, uh, yeah. but just, just to hear like you make love and I love that, that yeah. version of it. Yeah. With the banjo and, uh, you know, yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of like an unplugged version of it. They're all standing at the front of the stage, yeah. uh, kind of yeah. playing, which was, which was really nice. So, you know what, let us know on social media. What was your favorite Christine McVie moment? What song really kind of connected you to her? Or what are some of your favorites? You can do that on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, find us at, online at 3324 podcast, join the conversation. I think it would be really fun to hear what everybody else thinks. We've, we've kind of given you an hour's worth of of what she meant to us and like i said mm -hmm. fleetwood mac is like our, our one of our top bands so this was a a pretty big blow um yeah but but we have the music which is the thing is is the music is going to live forever you can always you can always visit with christine whenever you want uh which is the great thing and, and i'm glad that that she was able to kind of come back and come back in a good way it wasn't like oh this was just shouldn't have happened you know, yeah. uh, that, that, yeah. that last album, it really is something special. So definitely maybe start there and work backwards, you know, start with, start with that one and check it out. Cause it really is, is really great stuff. And it was, like I said, uh, some of his stuff was, was a little surprising of how vibrant it was and how ballsy, yeah. uh, they were, they were getting on this album of really trying to bring it. Um, and, and like I said, it was kind of a little bit of a miss that it wasn't branded Fleetwood Mac, but it's still great. Nevertheless. So, mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing so I, to say. I, you know, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just. Uh, it, it's Christine McVie. So she's she's going to be yeah. missed. But like I said, uh, we've got music that we can listen to. And she left us a, she left us a whole bunch. So that's great. And uh, uh, she's with she's with Dennis Wilson now. So they, you know, they were that was one of her great loves. Uh, and he died quite young when they were. Uh, I think they just broken up, but he passed away. So mm -hmm. uh, she's probably hanging out with him. And they're probably having a couple of beers because I think she was a beer drinker. Uh, or partake take her pretty much anything, but <laughs> <laughs> what, what didn't they do in the seventies? But that was, that's a, like they say is a story for another time. So that's right. Uh, we should do an episode about like drug debauchery, like the, the biggest bands that were just like the worst, you know, we could probably oh. start with Aerosmith <clears throat> and then work our way backwards to like the lesser. We'd have to do a lot of research <laughs> on that one. I think <laughs> you mean research of just like, what just what type of drugs did they do? do you know, when you let's say compare. <laughs> When you say research, do you mean the substances? We need to like, research, like <laughs> no. do that because that could be a very interesting episode. It could be. You know? Yeah. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Part two, the cocaine years. And then, yeah. We, Part three, LSD. <laughs> you might see some uh, SWAT guys come busting into the room as we're, as we're doing it. DEA. Like getting getting oh. cuffed as we're still, we're still talking. We're not done yet. Yeah. We got five more minutes in the episode. I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Flushing it down the toilet like Karen mm -hmm. Hill, <laughs> cutting, it, cutting it open with scissors. <laughs> what did you do, Karen? What did you do, Karen? I was depending on that, Karen. We <laughs> need money. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that, that's our tribute to Christine McVie before we get too far off the case. So definitely go check her stuff. All that stuff is on Spotify. There's expanded editions of all, like. The Fleetwood Mac albums all got a regular edition, then they got special expanded editions, so you can hear demos. If you're into that stuff, you can hear a, a lot of the, I think, the the Rumors one, mm. uh, and I believe uh, Mirage has a lot of songs that didn't even make it to the album that were kind of worked They're actually up. releasing a box set of all it, it the just alter came, it just came all out. The on, all the alternatives, yeah. Yeah, record st uh, for Record Store Day, which was uh, yeah. the day after Thanksgiving, they did release a box set of the alternate albums which i have almost all of them so it's like mm -hmm. okay i don't need to buy this box set now because <laughs> if you were gonna do that you should have just let me know and i would have saved my money uh, right? but all that stuff's on spotify easily available her material is out there even her very first solo album christine perfect from way back in 69 or whenever it was uh you can and chicken shack all that stuff's available so you can go do the whole take the whole journey and even the the middling stuff of flute mac all that stuff's available on spotify so you can really trace her trace her career trajectory and, and see where she started uh, and then see where, where she ended, which was on a fine note as well. So that's going to do it for this episode uh, for Eric. This has been Dean and we will see you on the flip side.